Hey guys, welcome back to another video and in today's video we are talking about Android Messages. Well they released an update last week and it's really interesting for people who use their computers a lot like me. So today let's talk about that. Now you don't need to use your phone to send and receive a text message anymore. Um, of course that's where it goes and comes from but you can use your computer to also respond and to read your SMSs. That's enormous because pulling out your phone and reading it every time it's just not fun. When you hear this for the first time, it feels like uh, an unnecessary luxury. Why would anyone need that, right? But everyone's doing it now and the reason they're doing it is because users are using more of it. Facebook has a desktop app. WhatsApp moved to a desktop a couple of years ago and uh, although you require a phone to send and receive these messages, when you're at work or when it's charging, you don't really want to be looking at your phone all the time. Why not use a bigger screen and a better keyboard when you're already at that setup, why don't why not use them for your text messages? Apple innovated really early on over here and uh, India Rhyme messages, you can use the computer directly to send and receive uh, text messages. But now Android is biting the bullet and it's a good thing. <laughs> Android messages is made by Google for Android phones, but depending on which make your phone is, you already have an SMS app. Uh, we don't want to use those SMS apps, we want to use this one. So open up your app drawer and look for Android messages. By the way, you can look the uh, you can use the search bar to search directly into the Play Store. You don't need to open the Play Store to search it. That's the one, the logo we just saw a short while ago. Download it and open it. Now you want to jump into your computer and uh, log into messages.android.com. All this while when we have discussed Google products, it's been product.google.com. I've been evangelizing about it for quite a while now, but this one's not google.com it's android.com and i think the reason they did that is because google does not have its messaging platform sorted you know they used to have google talk then they had hangouts they have google allo uh, they have not decided so this one's specifically for android to replace the sms app so they're going with android.com let's dive right in uh, go to messages.android.com First of all, yeah, bookmark this page because you'll be coming here again and again and you can just type MES and the page will open up. Then uh, remember this computer because you don't want to scan the QR code again and again. Then on your phone, uh, set it as default app and hit menu, messages for web and scan the QR code. Once you've done that, you're all set, like it tells. <laughs> So all your messages are here. You can look at them and reply uh, directly from here. As I find this really useful when you when I get OTPs for making purchases. I can just copy this and paste it in my uh, purchase page. You know that's uh, really convenient. I have to point out that this feature is really unstable. Like any other Google feature, the first version is not the best. They always call it beta, and they keep releasing new versions, and the next version is always better than the previous one. I remember using WhatsApp web as well and it used to be really buggy. It always wanted my phone to reconnect. I need to open WhatsApp on my phone and make sure on the same Wi-Fi, all of that pain. But now WhatsApp web works so well. I don't even need to be on the same Wi-Fi. I can use my 3G on my phone and my computer is on the Wi-Fi and it still works. WhatsApp web is really stable now, but I'm sure Google is going to do the same thing with Android, but I have a couple of First of all, it's not an app on the computer, it's a web interface. So you need to open Google Chrome to use it. They may release an app, but they have not been good with apps before. They have the Google Keep app, I've used it. It doesn't update quickly, it doesn't download all your latest notes quickly, you have to wait forever. But if you go to a new Google Chrome tab and look for keep.google.com, it just works. So I think they need to look at apps because it just makes life so much easier. I use Chrome to browse and I don't want to use it for sending messages. So if it's an app neatly tucked away, I'd use that. So that's the first thing I have against it. The second thing I have against it is iMessage is way better. Apart from the stability and always working features, which just takes time, they also have IM. Now, let me explain. If you're sending an SMS to someone, you need to save that contact. You add their name, their phone number, and now you can send them a message from your SMS app. But in case you're traveling or don't have a cell network for some reason, but have Wi-Fi, and you open up the same chat box and send a message, it still goes through with iMessage, not so with Android. The reason it does that is because it doesn't use SMS all the time. It uses IM. 
when you don't have SMS. And that's just ingenious. They clubbed this at a time when everyone was, was criticizing them for doing it, but it just works so well. So I don't have an iPhone, but when I open up my iMessage, I still receive messages from people who use iPhones. They just send it from their iMessage and it pops up on my computer or on my iPad. That's really ingenious and Android needs to do that because they have the muscle power to take IM. IM is just SMS but via the internet. You don't need a SIM card for that. You just need an email address and you can send it. How Apple does this is they integrate your phone number and your Apple ID together if you're using an iPhone. And now if you send an iMessage, it will always reach the other guy depending on which one's available first. So you can use SMS or IM and it will always reach the other guy. I think Android needs to get on that game because I don't need to be connected on my phone all the time to use it. And as an Android user, iMessage is not so appealing to me because everyone doesn't have iMessage. But people who are with iMessage, the reason they don't leave iPhone is not any of the other bells and whistles or beautiful design template whatever of the iPhone, it's iMessage. Today, we're gonna find out once and for all which smartphone is in the pocket of each of these very important individuals. The iPhone 10. All right, iPhone 10. It's hard to break away from that ecosystem. What is it about this ecosystem you're talking about? More specifically, just iMessage, I guess. I'm gonna be straight up. It's iMessage, man, in the ecosystem. Whoa. It's, it, that's what it is for me. I don't even know what this means, this it's, iMessage. It's, 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 it's not about the blue and green Okay, bubbles. what is it about? I'm always on my computer, always on the phone. Somebody hits me up. Usually it's a family member who's also on iMessage. I get it wherever I am. Ah. I mean, you could do the whole Hangouts no, I don't thing. Know. Just, but or, I don't or want some, to some other messenger. You know, a lot of the world, they use WhatsApp, for example. What? Yeah, I mean, yeah. Look, I've got that comment a lot. Yeah. But it's like, okay, I got to tell you, go download something. What would it take for you to switch over? iMessage on Android, yeah. honestly. That's really surprising to me, but it's true. So that's my quick rant and I'm sure Google is going to update these. Maybe the app will not come, but they're going to make it better with time. Before we finish this video, there are two things that really tempt me to go on to the iPhone side, but I still don't because it's more than twice as expensive. Um, the first thing was iMessage because it always works on my computer. Once in a way, I have the luxury of using a really slick workstation at one of my friend's places to edit videos. And when I'm using this, I just want to use that awesome screen and awesome keyboard to send over the message. That was the first thing. I think Android is kind of slicing that apart. And the second thing is AirDrop. Nowadays, mobile phones take such good quality video and it's really a pain to move these videos into your computer where you want to edit them. Apple has this thing called AirDrop, which is awesome. It uses Wi-Fi to send your stuff, heavy videos, heavy photos from one device to another, uh, and it's really awesome. Android offered the same feature with third-party apps like ShareIt and uh, AirDroid, but now they don't work on Macs anymore. I think they have a firewall or something that blocks it. They don't work anymore, and that's really destructive, Apple. Let people use your computers for crying out loud. That's one thing I hate with Apple. You have to buy all of Apple products. I don't want to get the iPhone because Android gives me more freedom. I want to stick with Android and use my Mac. If Google finds a way to move heavy files from your phone to your computer, to your Mac computer, that will be the last straw. Nothing will tempt me to go to the Apple side anymore, you know? I know this technology already exists because when you want to upload photos to Google Photos, like 5,000, 6,000 photos, they have a software called Backup and Sync uh, for your Mac and you can just upload stuff from there directly. And when you put up stuff from your Android, it goes there too. Um, I think you can bypass that. You can still do, the, do this now to move your stuff, but you need internet and it is compressed. If you can get rid of those two things, uh, use Wi-Fi instead and don't compress, that's that's it that that's it android is king either ways thank you so much for watching this video guys i hope that was helpful let me know if you liked it and if you don't tell me what part you didn't like subscribe to my channel if you haven't already so you can see more content like this and don't forget keep learning